the other thing is, credibility was really important for FDA to do more. And right when I was in the transition period, I realized that you know, there, was, there was a big issue whether FDA didn't get authority over tobacco. Well, you wouldn't give authority over tobacco to an agency that people thought was a broken agency or was failed. Or, you know, I mean, but yet, if you want to do more things, just like those two involved more, people have to feel like you have credibility. And so, at a certain point, I began to think and talk to others, and the kind of idea emerged: how do you build credibility back to the FDA? And that became one of our real planning themes. So um, you can see why I read the book, and I think, like, well, you know, it's kind of describing a little bit of what kind of the world that we were trying to trying to put together. And we we concluded that one of the ways to um, enhance credibility was to really explain to people that FDA is a public health agency. That, that, you know, and that, that had been lost a little bit. We felt the history of the FDA pointed to being a public health agency. And we thought that that theme was a natural one for me as the uh, former health commissioner of Baltimore and for the commissioner, uh, Dr. Hamburg, who was the nominee at the time, the uh, former public health um, commissioner of New York City. And that we would do that um, using a few tools, um, including Transparency, meaning we would explain what we were doing at the agency better. We would explain how what we're doing and saying connects to public health. And um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But we have now a uh, major transparency initiative. We have a whole uh, website devoted to explaining in basic terms what the agency does. We just launched a performance management website where 100 offices at FTA have about 500 monthly measures of their progress so people can see how we're doing. It's a way to explain what the agency does. We thought there was a big gap there. Um, second, um, we wanted to really focus on innovation, which is part of public health. We define public health as both the benefit and the risk part. So we didn't really want to get to we're going to be pro-industry or anti-industry, but we're going to be pro-public health. And we have talked a lot about um, the importance of investments in FDA and the regulatory science part of FDA for innovation and industry. And, had some very interesting meetings with venture capitalists where they say that um, the uh, agency with one guidance can create a whole market. And so, you know, we're really trying to, to, to view that as an important part of public health. Third, integrity. Um, a lot of issues that come up about the integrity of decision making in FDA. And one of the things that um, we did was uh, initiated a review of a very contested decision um, about a knee device. Um, where the Wall Street Journal and others had written about a very unusual process that had happened within the agency. And, and when I was the acting commissioner, I asked the chief scientist, the chief policy person, the chief lawyer to uh, develop a little team to look at what happened there. And in the end, they, rec they found a significant the flaws in the process and recommended that the device be re reviewed. Um, and that was, uh, I'm going to get to this, you know, it's a little bit different than the, the, one of the points in the book that people really hate to revisit past decisions, but I thought that was very important to our credibility, that we were willing to do that in a case where it looked like there were big problems, and really say that we took integrity of decision making very seriously. Enforcement was something that was very important for credibility, um, otherwise uh, you have a very serious problem where people think they can get away with things, and then the whole kind of standard in the industry kind of slips, and Dr. Hamburg gave a big speech early on about enforcement. And um, finally, I thought, key to credibility was our emergency responsiveness. And when I left Baltimore, I said to my staff that um, I was getting out before the big pandemic flu hit, which I thought was a joke, because you know, three weeks later, the pandemic flu hit. And I was the acting commissioner of FDA. And I got a call from the uh, CDC acting commissioner, and he said that uh, you know, under the law, FDA, in order to move the stockpiles of medicines and everything all around the country, FDA had to um, do some emergency authorizations. And the last time they tried this with FDA, it took six months to get a pre-authorization in place, but it was Friday and they needed to move it Monday. And should they try to just pretend that part of the law didn't exist and just get it out there anyway, or what did we think we could do? I mean, it was Friday, they had to move it Monday. And um, based on sort of a little bit of what I had done, or I had seen and learned in Baltimore, we reorganized our decision-making structure. We created an instant command structure. We had a whole team of people work over the weekend, and I signed the emergency authorizations at 3 in the morning on Monday morning, and we did the first dosing ever for Tamiflu for kids under one um, very quickly that kind of held up over time. And I was able to testify before Congress for the first time. They heard from our administration on two hearings about flu before, but did before drug safety hearings about flu. And I walked them through how we were. We FDA immediately sprang to life to do this, and people, everyone said to me, 
And I learned very early on there's an entire industry at FTA that prepares people to you know, testify before Congress. I mean, it was like, we're going to do the, you know, briefing one of four. And I was like, I understand this stuff. I was there. I don't need briefing one of four, you know. But I mean, this idea, they have big briefing books and everything. And because everybody's just, people would just get torn apart again and again and again. I said, I think this is going to be a little different. And we just said, here's what we're doing. Here's, you know, we're scientists, we're inspectors, we're lawyers, we're here to serve the American people's health in this time of crisis. And we got just a ton of positive feedback from, from Congress, which I thought was very important to us early on. So. Um, let me just say that there are challenges to living in the middle of this. Um, one is that we get our credibility attacked all the time from different sides. Um, sometimes on the exact same decision, people will look at it from different perspectives. Um, I think that uh, some people definitely uh, feel like we should be doing um, more in terms of uh, post-market safety, and other people feel like we're doing too much in terms of pre-market safety, particularly. Um, we once had a, a story in the uh, New York Times when we announced that we had some concerns about this phenol A, which is a chemical, and that we were going to do some more research, and in the meantime, we were going to recommend that people take reasonable steps to reduce their exposure. And the, the story in the New York Times said that uh, advocates on both sides lambasted the agency's decision. And I said to Dr. Hamburg, that's about as much of a sweet spot as you can get for, you know, for the FDA. Um, but both sides very angry. So I think, and we had we have companies who are making allegations. It's not just you know that FDA is being unfair to them in particular cases. Um, but I do think that overall, I think that we're a year in, and you know that uh, you can see this book in part by you know, reading the newspaper and thinking about whether we're succeeding. And um, I think that uh, we did get the track of bill passed. They're talking about a big food safety bill that would significantly expand FDA's authority. And um, there's uh, a lot of interest in drug safety uh, legislation, particularly around imports as well. And I testified recently before the Energy and Commerce Committee, again, on this time on drug safety, and bipartisan support for how the agency is um, uh, doing a lot of things and understood the message that we needed more authority there. 